mental life, knowing how to control your own mind, so your mind doesn't destroy your life, but your mind becomes a superpower. So if you go to any classical ancient spiritual tradition, they understood there are different levels of structure, different levels of manifestation from the high divine level where you're connected with the one being of all things and all beings together as a unity. And then you go down to these multiple levels, given different names and different traditions, all the way down to the physical plane. And we need to understand that the electromagnetic is actually below the physical plane. It's not life energy. It's not above the physical. It's actually below it. We'll go into that in more detail a little bit later. But the whole idea here is that there's a pattern behind everything. The ancient traditions are almost all uniform in saying where all physical structure comes from is a thought form in the mind of God from that original unity field. It starts as a type of a thought form of a pure pattern. Then that pattern manifests at the spiritual tradition as archetypal spiritual beings, conscious spiritual beings as real as you and I, more real in some ways, much more advanced, that are an actual crystallization into conscious beingness of certain patterns and certain powers and certain functions. And then they understood that from there, you begin to form the patterns of karma, of actual physical incarnation, of what in the West and the Theosophical Society call the causal plane. Then you come down to the forming of the structures of how we understand things conceptually at the mental plane. Then it comes down to how it forms the structures of our emotional body, which is what really drives most of our behavior. And then it comes down to that wave talked about in physics, of the etheric body, the chi, ki, prana, level of vital life force. And that's a pure energy structure that then gives the structure that the physical matter then condenses or crystallizes around to create the physical body. And then when those life energy forces are used up constructing the physical body, they decay below the speed of light and they become the electromagnetic spectrum. So if we understand that as the basic understanding in the ancient world for how everything works, then we can understand that it's the patterns behind everything that are absolutely key. So we have to understand as we grow up from a child to an adult and start taking care of ourselves instead of somebody else taking care of us, that process of maturation in every lifetime is a type of microcosmic playing out in a single lifetime of what happens to us as a spiritual being across multiple lifetimes. We start not knowing anything, being very ignorant, and higher spiritual beings have to guide us and teach us. And then we incarnate in the physical body. We go through a whole series of those things. So our physical lifetime tends to be a microcosmic representation of the same pattern of the multiple lifetime journey. And this happens all over the place. Today we call it fractals, that this particular pattern exists on all scales of development. If you get a sphere, which is the primary form for holding consciousness and energy together, you get a sphere, which is a holding form, and you open it up at the top and bottom so energy can flow through it, like an hourglass shape in the center, mm -hmm. and then flow around the outside and then back to the center and back around the outside. That's a torus. Once you start to perceive these yes. patterns, you see how everything is connected, and it's the same basic patterns that rule everything. And so I show in the Gaia series that the torus exists from the subatomic level. We have photographs of toroidal structures subatomically up to galactic levels that have toroidal structures. So this is the idea of scale invariance, that regardless of how big or small the scale is, the same pattern is the key pattern to create the energy flow. But the same thing is true for us emotionally and mentally. All of us, I think, have had the experience where we grow up and we have these tremendous yearnings, emotional yearnings. Where's our missing half? Where's the person we're going to unify with? Where's all of my romantic aspirations I was taught to have as a young child, taking in media about that perfect partner I would have that would make my life complete? Hmm. And we had that emotional yearning. And then through the school of hard knocks, with some relationships that maybe didn't work out well and we were very naive in and we got knocked around, we began to say, oh, I better figure this out. And then we begin to see patterns. I have certain patterns of behavior I didn't know that screw up my relationships. I see dysfunctional patterns in other people, and maybe I could handle that in this person, but I don't want to deal with it in this person It's just too dysfunctional. So we start seeing those patterns at the emotional level. Same thing at the mental level. How do I put my life together? How do I divide my time in the day? What's important and not important to me? Everything has a pattern on every level. And once you begin to understand these patterns, the same thing is true on the spiritual levels. There are patterns to how spiritual beings work and operate. And this is going to be important for us because when we pass through the gate of death, 
If we don't have some understanding for how spirit operates and we haven't developed any organs of spiritual perception, we're as deaf, dumb, and blind spiritually as Helen Keller was in the physical world. Right. Where she had to be guided around everywhere. And that's why you see these pictures in the old Egyptian tradition, like from the Papyrus of Ani, which we know as the Egyptian Book of the Dead, and is better called the Book of Coming Forth into Light. That in that you see Ani, who's the initiate being trained, he's like bent over, hunched over, and he's got this greater being holding his hand and guiding him through these worlds that he's not able to navigate through or understand himself yet. That's what happens to every human being. Our goal is to develop to where we understand the patterns. You have a healthy body once you understand the patterns that make a healthy body. Right. Until then, you're a victim of unhealthy patterns yep. and not knowing what the patterns are. Same thing with your energy body. They have strong, vital force. You have to understand what the principles are for feeding that, both through the food we take in, through breathing practices, exercise, a whole variety of things. The emotional body being healthy and you actually have a life that's emotionally full and fun and joyous rather than a constant misery. A very important part of this is that to create the Vesca Pisces, you have one circle of a given size. When you add another circle of the same size, its outer boundary must touch the center of the first circle. And then the outer boundary of the first circle will touch the center of the second circle. So that means that the periphery of creation connects to the divine, the source of creation, in that connection of the periphery and center in the Vesica Pisces. Now often this type of thing that's spoken about at all, and this is very rarely spoken of, is spoken of as a philosophy. It's not just abstract philosophy, this is an energy science. This can be applied. We use variations on this form in biogeometry to create energetic fields. It's, it's very important. And so that form of the vesica then is what is the, the center, the balance point between the two opposite polarities of the two circles. Today we use that same pattern and we call it a Venn diagram. Like where do things overlap? There's this thing here and it overlaps with this thing in the Venn diagram. That's a vesica. It's a, a modern intellectual take on a vesica. So I call my organization the Vesica Institute because it's about teaching how spirit and science connect how spirit and matter connect, how consciousness and energy connect. And for higher level alchemy, yin and yang connect, masculine and feminine, like with Tantra, everything's based on the unity of these two polarities in the center, the vesica. So this is a very important concept of sacred geometry. And that is that these most important sacred geometry forms, every form in sacred geometry is like a letter of a divine alphabet. And the beings that created our world use those forms in combination with each other. It's like we put together letters to make a word or to make a sentence. They put together the sacred geometric shapes like words to create everything in our world, including our physical bodies and energetic bodies. And so the concept of the Vesk Institute, again, is teaching how these things fit together, consciousness and energy, spirit and science, etc., to form the basic knowledge and skill set every human being needs to navigate consciously in the world and use your lifetime for the maximum benefit. Because we tend, most people tend to fritter away their lives in a bunch of nothing. Yeah. And what, ha Sadly. what then happens, what then happens, like it talks about in the old Egyptian mysteries, is when they cross the gate of death, they're deaf, dumb, and blind. They haven't developed any organs of spiritual perception. They haven't developed the ability to navigate by themselves in the higher worlds. And they're just kind of in this dreamlike state in the afterlife until they get stuck back in a body and using the organs in their body. Now they can be conscious enough to do things. But then they just get lost again and spend doing a bunch of nonsense. And they, you know, how many school of hard knocks incarnations do you need before you wake up and actually use a lifetime properly?